page 135 in your red books. Let's sing along together, come and dine. Aren't you glad that you can come and dine with the Lord anytime you need to?
obtained amazing grace.
There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore.
come home for and for friends. saved and our loved ones have gone on and our friends that have gone on are saved that we're that much closer to home and seeing them once again. Amen. Amen. And the closer to home, brother, rest of them, we're not going to have to say goodbye again. We're not going to have heartaches. We're not going to have troubles. There's not going to be any trials. We don't have to go through no sicknesses or anything else. Because we're going to live in a land where Jesus Christ is the is the sun that's going to outshine them all. And we'll be able to worship and praise an everlasting, forgiving and loving God. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. And if we let me just say this, if we can't worship God here on this earth, then I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven because that's all it's going to be about is bowing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and worshiping him. Amen. Amen. Your cows have been having a lot of trouble with her stomach. When she eats, it goes to hurting real bad and tearing her up. Yeah. And uh, Angel as well. Praise the Lord, heal them. Yeah. Thank 
Let's talk about love today. God is love. Amen. Amen. Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's walk in love. Brother Rusty, I don't think I can love you if I don't tell you the truth. Right. Right. Think about it. Right. But so many people today can't take the truth. But I can't love you if I can't tell you the truth. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Are we there? Paul says, Be you therefore followers of God as dear children. You know, we're, if we're born of God, Brother Rusty, we are His children. Yes. Yes. And guess what? I believe that God will chastise the church. Yes, we get out of the way, He will chastise. But Paul says in verse 2, he says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God for a sweet smell and savor. Yeah. Now think about that verse there, friends. Where it says, walk in love as Christ also loved us. How much did Christ love us? To die for us, didn't he? Die for us, didn't he? he offered us a sacrifice unto God. It said, Paul said there in that verse. For a sweet smelling savor. He says in verse 3, he says, but fornication and all uncleanness or Covetousness, let it not be once named among you. Uh, as becoming saints, Paul says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor suggestion, which are not Convenient, but rather giving of thanks. All of these things that Paul just named, named Brother Rusty, is not giving thanks to God. But Paul tells us, says, says don't mention these things. Don't talk about these things, but, uh, but rather give thanks. Give thanks to God for all that we have, our family. what we have in this world. He says in verse 5, he says, For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, hath any in 
inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now I want you to think about this verse, friends. Yeah. It, it, it's telling us that whoremongers and, and, and uh, idolaters and people of uncleanness which is as uh, uh, homosexuality. Things like this, now think about it, has no part in the kingdom of, uh, of Christ and of God. What's God's kingdom? Now think about this. You're sitting in God's kingdom right there. You're sitting in the kingdom of Jesus Christ right now. And that is the church kingdom. Yeah. Think about it. And Paul just told us if, if we do these things and we talk these things as uh, uh, Brother Rusty, we can't have no part in it. God can't hear us. Think about it. And what do you think? If, if, if we go through this world doing these things, are we going to have part in, in heaven? No. He says in verse 6, Paul says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. What vain words? The words that he just told us to not sit around and talk and, and uh, uh, about uncleanness, whoremongering, and, and everything else. Don't sit around and talk about it. Then he, and he says uh, in verse 6, Let no man deceive you with these vain words. For because of this thing cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Yeah. The wrath of God's going to come, Brother Rusty. Yeah. And, and a lot that, that thinks they are when they're not uh, uh, will be in trouble yeah. with God. And you think the chastisement of God uh, here while we're on this earth, the church on, on this earth, is nothing to what his wrath is to come. Right. He says in verse 7, he says, Be you not therefore partakers with them, right. kind of people. Right. Right. Nothing, to do. nothing to do with them. Right. He says in verse 8, he says, For you were sometimes darkness, and he says, But now are you, are you lit in the Lord. Light in the Lord, walk as children of the light. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Paul's going to tell us how to walk here a little, little bit in this scripture. Yeah. Boy, if we could just walk as Paul walked, if we could walk as Peter walked, or any of the disciples. But we can't take the truth in the world today. We flee from it. I know some people get, you can start telling them the truth about them or telling them the truth and they'll get mad. <laughs> Paul says in verse 9, he says, For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Well, like I said a minute ago, people can't take the truth. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do something that I don't want to do. I'm afraid I'm going to have to quit something that I'm doing that God don't want, don't want me to do. Well, if you're trying to walk a Christian life, you better quit doing it. Paul says in verse 10, he says, Prove what is acceptable unto God, unto the Lord. Prove it. Prove it to who? The Lord. Don't have to prove anything to man. Now if he believes the word and wants to hear the word and everything, uh, uh, and, and he wants proof of the word, then let him ask and we'll show. Yeah. When we prove, when we 
prove uh, to the Lord that we're sold out, then our lifestyle will show those around. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Listen to what Paul says in verse 11. He says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What's that word reprove mean? What does it mean, Louise? I think it means warn them, don't it? Rebuke. What does rebuke mean? Scold. Criticize or correct. Yep. To scold or correct usually, gently, or with kindly intent. Yeah, well, if you scold a whole lot of people, they think you are, are, are mean to them, mad to them. Yeah. Yeah. So I told Brother Rusty a while ago before church, the church needs old Paul here today. Yeah. Goes on to, and said, also says to express disapproval of. Uh, like this, uh, prove and rebuke or reproof. Yeah, let's read it again. Paul says in verse 11, and have no fellowship with the um, what? And the works of what? Darkness. What's the darkness mean? Sinful? Yeah, it's sinful words. But rather reprove them. See, the church has got that mixed up. Yeah. They want to hang out. They want to take God's love and say, well, we got to hang out with them. we got to show them love and kindness. But according to this scripture, we don't do that as far as hanging out with them, uh, trying to set up barbecues for them and things like that and, and fellowship. But what we're supposed to do is show them the love of Christ. When, Amen. We see them, when we see them on the street, we're supposed to speak to them, give them a kind word, That's and, right. and go on them out of the way. Not, That's not right. set up and have fellowship with these folks. That's right. That's and what God talking use, about. They always want to use, well, if Jesus was to come back, it's straight where he'd go to, at the bars and all that stuff. Yeah, but he wouldn't sit there and hang out with them. No. That's and, right. And fellowship like the church world is trying to do today. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. what, that's why we don't see nobody in the church because there's too much of the world in the church. Yeah. Amen. And, and it's sad right. because you can look down and see almost too, uh, a lot of church in the world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Paul says in verse 12, listen to what he says after he tells us 11. He says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done uh, of them in the secret. You ever hear a bunch of old men? I'm not just uh, old men, but women too. Out here in the world, boy, just gossiping and running their mouths about things that's displeasing to God. And, and, and uh, then the whole world knows it after a while. Why? It's got out somehow. Paul says it's a shame to speak of it, doesn't he? He, Paul says in verse 13, he said, But all things that are what? Reproved. Reproved are made manifest by the light. Yes. For whatsoever doth make manifest is the light. Yes. Let's help. Jesus Christ, hey, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Yes, he He's going to make, make it manifest, Brother Rusty. When he comes back, it's going to be known. I can see the knees are bowing now. They talk about every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess yeah. that, that Jesus is Lord. It's too late. Too late he says in verse 14, Paul tells us, he says, Wherefore, he said, Awaken thou that sleepeth. There's a whole lot in the church today is sleeping. God's displeased with them today. He says, and arise from the dead. Get up, you like the dead bones in the valley. You, you don't have any spirit in you. He says, and Christ shall give them light. Get up from the dead. Get up from your sleep. 
And Jesus Christ will give you life. It, it, it's a shame how the church world is walking today. Sad to say that a lot of the church world is walking with their own light, thinking they got the light of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And it says to, uh, to arise from the dead here in, in Christ. Yeah. Will, uh, shall give thee light. Amen. Well, look at the dead there. Go back in the old Bible, the dry bones in the Bible, they're dead. Dead from what? The Spirit. Yeah. They're asleep. I guess some people at Ephesus too. The church there in Ephesus, they probably throw stones and everything else at Brother Rusty. Didn't like the way he was preaching to them. Well, you take a, a man that comes through and starts preaching the Word today, they don't want the Word. The Bible tells us that. They be down, uh, believe a lie, be down to go to hell before they believe the truth. But yet they'll go out here and let some false preacher preach them a bunch of false doctrine and they'll believe it and go right on with it. Yeah. You try to tell them the truth, I don't believe that. Huh? Think about it. This scripture here is a good scripture for a whole lot that I know. It's a good scripture for me. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says in verse 15, he says, Seeing then that you walk what? Circumspectly. What is that? Circumspectly. Thinking careful about possible risks before doing or saying something. Yeah. Amen. Careful to consider all circumstances and possible consequences. Yes. Not as fools, Paul says in verse 15, but as wise men. Be wise about it. How are we going to be wise if we don't study and, and read the Scripture? Amen. That's right, brother. Can't just take man's word, can we? We, we talked about it the other day that uh, it, it's easy for someone to confuse you if you don't study a scripture. Yeah. That's right. But if you get a you get a preacher up there and he comes to preaching nonsense, then if you're in the scripture following, you're supposed to be following what he's preaching about, then you'll know. Amen. That's right. Now, listen. Redeeming the time. In other words, rescuing it. Yeah. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. There it is. See? See, Paul was telling them back there, the days was evil back in those days. Yeah. But it's worse today. Why? Because there's a lot more people today than there were back then. Yeah. So you get a lot more sinning in the world. Go ahead, dear. Uh, the actual definition for redeeming goes a little deeper. Oh, yeah. It says making a bad or unpleasant thing or person better or more acceptable. So that's what he was saying with redeeming the time. Yeah. No matter how bad it is, make it more uh, acceptable. Amen. Yeah. Now Paul says, tells us in verse 17, he says, Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. Tell me what the will of God is. That's right. None should perish. But you got them out there, Brother Rusty. I think me and you talked about this before. Some of them out there, well, God loves everybody. He ain't going to punish nobody. And they just run and, uh, here and there, to and fro, just doing it, whatever they want to do, believing that God won't punish you. Yes? God's day is coming. The day of punishment is coming 
If I don't walk the way God wants me to walk, Brother Rusty. Right. Right. That plain and simple. Because just like you said there uh, a minute ago, yeah, uh, uh, God don't want anybody to go to hell. If I go to hell, I take myself to hell. Amen. They don't understand that. I hear people say all the time, well, if God sits love and gets just God, why will He allow anyone to go to hell? But like you said, the point is, God didn't allow it. He gave us free will and a choice. And if you chose not to serve, then you chose to go to hell. Amen. That's right. It's my choice where I go. Now here Paul says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Yeah. And brother, if I want to be drunk, that's what I want to be drunk on. Yeah. Amen. That Spirit leading me, teaching me, and guiding me. Right. Because it will never lead me wrong. Right. It will always take me down the path that I should walk. Yeah. Right. It's got several good perks. Never lead you wrong. Always take you down the right path, and you won't have to hug the porcelain throne the next morning. Amen. <laughs> now he says in verse 19, Paul tells us, he says, speaking to yourselves. Now listen to that, to ourselves. In yep. psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in their heart unto the Lord. See, that's why I can go down this road, Brother Rusty, even with my wife sitting beside of me and, and in my mind uh, uh, singing a song or, or whatever unto the Lord. Yeah. Same way at my home. Paul tells you in verse 20, he says, giving thanks always for the things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Friends, if we'll pray to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, talking to God, Brother Rusty, yeah. I believe things will happen. Amen. Yes, it will. Listen to what Paul tells you now. He says, in verse 21, he says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, I want to tell you, he's talking to man and wife here. Submitting myself to my wife, my wife submitting to me in the fear of the Lord. Listen, with the Lord, what the Lord wants us to do, and walking in the Lord and everything, not this bondage stuff that they preach and go on with. This is talking about walking in the Lord's yeah. and the way the Lord wants us to walk. He says in verse 22, he says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Yeah. How do you submit yourself to the Lord? Obedience. Obedience. That's what my wife submits to me. From her brother Rusty, and guess what? It don't leave me out. I'm supposed to submit yes. obedience back. Amen. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be one of them. Hey, you're my slave. Who is I yeah. <laughs> he says in verse 23, Paul says, "For the husband is the head of the wife." even as Christ is the head of the church and He is the Savior of the body. Now let's read that again so that we can catch it. He says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Yeah. <coughs> How is Christ the head of the church? He's the Savior of the church. He's the Savior Let's read the rest of it. And He is the Savior of the body. The body of what? Christ. The body of Christ. The body of the church. We are the body of Christ. 
Does everybody catch that? Huh? We are the body of Christ. The church is. He says in verse 24, he says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. Think about that. The wife is subject to the church. And the husband is subject to the wife as Christ is to the church too. You think you're left out? He says, so let the wives be unto their own husbands and everything. Now listen in verse 25. He says, therefore, or, or, or husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loves the church. Yeah. Now tell me, you, you don't have to be obedient to your wife. You have to be obedient to your wife, husbands, if, if, if uh, you love them. Yeah. Wives, you have to be obedient to your husbands if you love them. Yeah. My wife is asking me of something, I have to do it, or I'm going to do it if I love her. Yeah. And it's not the wrong thing. Now, if she asked me to do something wrong, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be disobedient. Yeah. And wives, if your husband's asked anything of you that's right, do it. Or you're disobedient. Let's read that again. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave his self, himself for it. Yeah. Yeah. See, each, each, the wife and the husband both, Brother Rusty is supposed to be willing to give their life for one another. Yeah. That's walking in love, ain't it? Well, I love old Paul. He didn't leave anything out. No, but you know something? A lot of people twisted and around and leave a whole lot out. Yeah. Yep. And adds a lot to it. Yeah. Yep. He says in verse 26, he says that he might, after, after verse 25, that he <laughs> might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yeah. That word water there is word. Now I can't go down there and get baptized and wash my sins away. No. I've got to come to the Lord in prayer and forgiveness yeah. of my sins and ask Him to come into my life and the Holy Spirit and God. There's three, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lead me, teach me, and guide me. Have to get into the Word of God, studying it, reading it, studying it, reading it, studying it. Yeah. I've read and studied it so long, sometime, Brother Rusty, I just go cross eyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Since that mentioned water will probably throw a lot of folk off if they'll go over to John uh, 15 and 3. Jesus is talking and he says, Now ye are clean through the Word. Which I have spoken unto you. Yeah. Amen. The word, not the and, water. And 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 there in twenty six where it says that he maketh what? Sanctified. Sanctified. You you know what that sanctified means? Make holy. Make holy yourself. In other words, clean yourself up with all this filth and this that Paul's talking to us about here in the first part of this scripture and, and and start following after Jesus Christ and God and letting the Holy Spirit lead, teach, and guide us and we'll be alright. Right. 
He says, but Paul says in verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Present it to who? To himself. To himself. Yes. A glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy without a blemish. I can't be holy, Brother Rusty, if, if I deny everything that my wife asks me yeah. right. to cover. Or my wife can't be holy if, if, if she, uh, uh, you know, want to go against everything that I say or do, whether it be right or wrong. Huh? Right. Well, if it's wrong, I want her to be against me. But if it's right, we're supposed to walk in unity. Yeah. Loving one another. Fearing God, Paul says. Paul says in verse 28, he says, So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. How much do you love yourself, man? Yeah. That right there says a lot, doesn't it? He, he goes on in, in, in verse uh, 28 there and he says, He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Yeah. You don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. Uh, that's what Paul said. You don't love yourself, you don't love your wife. All of this boils down to it starts at home uh, 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 reading and studying the Bible and talking about the Word of God between one another. Yeah. And what is the Word of God? And it covers a whole lot, Brother Rusty, and that's the Ten Commandments yeah. is the Word of God. When, when we get into that, we, we can see it. I, I, I was reading it this morning. Talking about the Word of God. The Word of God being the Ten Commandments. You know, there's more commandments than that ten. Yeah. He says in verse 29, he says, So no, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and, and chastised it, sure. even, uh, sure. or cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. Yeah. See, the... the, the the uh, Lord chastises the church. Paul, oh, it's right there in the verse. Or cherishes it. But he does chastise. But he does chastise, yeah. In verse 30 he says, For we are members of his body. The, Brother Christy, that's what I was talking about a while ago. The church is the member of Jesus Christ's body. Yeah. Because without Jesus Christ, guess what? There'd be no church. We are the members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. But he didn't leave anything out. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He's the high priest, Brother Rusty. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 31, he says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they... Two, number two, there's two of you, man and woman, shall be one flesh. One flesh. Yeah, unity. And what does unity mean? One man, one accord. One man, one accord, agreeing. Agreeing. Just like Jesus Christ and the Father. They sitting there talking back and forth, and you can't tell. Well, I don't believe they talk. Yes, they talk back and forth. Jesus talks to his Father, yeah. and, and, and guess what? They agree. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They all three agree. And guess what? They become one. Well, how can they be three? Uh, one. Uh, 
Man, I've heard them come off with everything, ain't you? Well, they are. There are three. Well, why, why, how can they become one? Because they agree. And right. unity. Yeah. Anybody got anything to say before we wrap it up? This has been a wonderful scripture, a scripture, a wonderful message for the day. It's a good study, ain't it? Good study. Yeah. All right, let's look at verse 32. It says, this is a great mystery. Uh-oh, what is a great mystery? Back up to 31. And they too shall be one flesh. Yeah. That's a great mystery too. It's a mystery to them today. Yeah. And we're, we're so advanced, Brother Rusty, so far ahead. Well, I don't know. Look at the pyramids and buildings that they built back then. Without mortar and anything else, you can't take a hacksaw blade and stick it between the blocks. Today, they got to have mortar and everything to build it. But it's still a mystery to them today, a bunch of people. He says in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. He speaks this whole scripture to, about Christ, Brother Rusty, and the church. Yeah. Where are you at today, church? Yeah. Nevertheless, in the last verse, Paul says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence or honors her husband. It's plain and simple, isn't it? Church, where do you stand today? And we all know because the Bible tells us you know that we don't need no preacher to teach us something, Brother Rusty, or teachers. It says God has already showed us that we should love God, Him, God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and love one another as we love ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. See, we already taught that. So, think about things. I do. <laughs> Because I don't want to go to heaven because of myself or, or hell, I mean. I don't want to go to hell because uh, uh, of myself taking me down the wrong path, Brother Rusty. Right. And I don't want to sit and listen to men because they will. I'm not talking about every man, friends. Every man is not wrong. But you've got a bunch of people out here in the world today that, that's teaching and preaching and twisting the Word of God that's not true. Right. Right. That if you believe it and you, you go back, then you're going to hell. And I didn't mean that I didn't want to go to heaven. I do want to go to hell. But I, I don't want to go to hell. Go to hell. You may have a testimony. That's why there ain't very many people that stay married very long, though, is because they don't want to be subject to each other. That's this right. one says, well, I've got this and you got that. No, you're supposed to have it all together. That's right. <laughs> Everything all together. That's what's wrong with the church world today, too. Man, they go to church just to grab uh, another woman or anything else. And I'm talking about preachers too. Shame. Disgrace to God. God don't like it. Got a song. Nobody's got a song. Brother Rusty is dismissed. Huh? Brother Rusty sings another one before he didn't even dismiss. You want to sing another one, Brother Rusty? Come right on up here. 
Remember that song that says everybody wants to go to heaven but nobody wants to die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's both ways that they don't want to die. They don't want to die physically and they don't want to die out spiritually, but they all want to go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They don't want to yeah. die to the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just you don't need to play the pie in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. Be my Jesus say, it will be so great when I get to that land. In my robe of white, I will fly away. First I'll hear the trumpet sound. And all the saints will be heaven bound. We will cross old Jordan wide. Stop and view the other side. There I'll see those holy hills. And my mansion he has built. I'll be the first one in the line. Gonna see my name in the book of life. In my robe of white, I will fly.